We spend a lot of time on this channel talking about current Islanders prospects and how they're doing and how they're evolving or how they're developing. Uh, but let's shift this. I want to do a new series of, of videos and focus on past Islanders prospects and not guys that are currently in the Islanders system or currently in the, in the NHL, guys that we're really familiar with how they're doing. Let's talk about players who are no longer on the Islanders radar or on the NHL radar. How are they doing? For this first one, I want to focus on Linus Soderstrom. Where is he and what's going on? I keep saying it, but hit that subscribe button. It really helps me grow the channel and reach a wider audience. Also, go to Twitter, follow at TLO Mitch. The reason I say that is just I don't want you to miss any breaking information I haven't yet covered on the channel. My kids are hard into Pokemon right now and it's bringing back all the nostalgia. I know this doesn't really have anything to do with the channel necessarily, but I've just got to get it out. Oh my god, I, I love that they're into this. It's bringing back all those feelings. They're watching the show before going to school and that theme song, oh, I want to be the very best, the best there ever was. Dun, dun. Let's not focus on Pokemon, that's obviously not what we're here to do. We're here to talk about Linus Soderstrom, one of the previous Islanders prospects in the prospect pool. How is he doing now that he's no longer associated with the Islanders? Where is he? What do we know about him? But before we begin with that, let's just talk about who he is as a player and how he came to the Islanders. So he's a fourth round pick from 2014, drafted 95th overall, just want to get that number right, 6'4", 196, not a small kid from Sweden, drafted out of Jew Gardens from the SHL. And so how did things evolve from once he was drafted to getting onto the island and where is he now and what's going on? Mainly the whole point of this is like, did we miss on something or not? In his draft year, playing for the U-20 squad, for Jew Gardens U-20 squad, had a 9.15 save percentage and a 2.61 goals against average in 23 games played. Not bad. Followed that up in his draft plus one year, again playing 14 games for the U-20 squad, uh, for Jew Gardens U-20 squad, 9.06-290. And then they sent him out on loan, they kind of bounced around at the Alvinskans level playing for, oh, I'm going to screw that up, Soldier Tals. Was totally messed that up. Uh, any Swedish person out there is going to kill me for that, and rightfully so. Uh, and then Almtuna, and he had a 909 in four games with the team that I had a really hard time pronouncing, and then an 808, 808 in a 303 in one game with Altuna. So kind of like bouncing around, getting a feel for other teams because he just wasn't getting a full run with Duke Gardens. In 2015-16, he goes out on loan again, full season loan to Vita Hassan. We know who they are. Alex Lundkrantz is there right now. Uh, and then Simon Holmstrom played there last year. They're another Alzenskan side. In that season, he's played 17 games, a 186 goals against average, and a 927 save percentage. Okay, rounding into form there. There's something there. Of course, it's Alzenskan's level, but rounding into form. And then that next year, he goes to HV71. Leaves Jew Gardens, goes to HV71, SHL side, and puts up phenomenal numbers. Phenomenal. 943 save percentage and a 134 goals against average. That goals against average erases Henrik Lundqvist's previous record from the SHL record book. Get out of here, King Henrik. It is a line of Soderstrom's time to shine here. And the Islanders go like, oh, word? Okay. Because not only does he put up this these really good numbers at the SHL level in the regular season, he follows that up in the playoffs with a 922 save percentage and a, a 2-1-1 goals against average as he powers HV71 to a championship. He wins a championship that year. And so the Islanders again are going, oh, word? Deal. They sign him in the offseason. They sign him to his ELC May 11th, 2017. Now he stays overseas that one year. So he follows up that ELC signing, stays in, in Sweden, plays for HV71 in 17-18, and not that great of a year in 14 games played, 894 and 279. Not great, but like there's a lot of fluctuation in the SHL, so that's you know, it is what it is. But the Islanders still signed him, so they they played him that year. They bring him over to North America in 1819, right? And things don't really go well from there. Uh, and it's not because he doesn't play well, it's because he doesn't play at all. 
In the two years that he's in North America from 1819 to 1920, he plays four games at the ECHL level for the Worcester Railers with an 870 save percentage and a 449 goals against average. The 1920 season would be his final one with the Islanders. After that year, they're just like, you know what? Don't worry, we're good. We're going to let you go. They don't even qualify him. They do not give him a qualifying offer as an RFA. And so he becomes a free agent and he signs for the uh, league aside Assad. I hopefully I didn't butcher that one. I will be corrected if I did, um, which is fine because then I learn how to say it going forward. Uh, so he goes to Assad in 2021 in 30 games, 909 save percentage, 261 goals against average. This year, still there with the SOT, 885 save percentage and a 3-1-1 goals against average in 18 games played. So things are kind of trending down, it seems. So what we're really concerned with, the answer we're trying to figure out is, did we miss out on something here? Did the Islanders miss out on qualifying Linus Soderstrom? I wouldn't say so. I don't think so. I'm sure he's a fine goalie. Obviously, he's got that really good season at uh, for HV71 in the SHL. But did the Islanders really miss out on something? Clearly not. Is he better than than Jakob Skarik right at this point, or even Ken Appleby? I wouldn't say so. If he was to be still be in the Islanders system, um, in in their goalie system depth chart, you'd have Sorokin, Varlamov, Skarik, and, and then Linus Soderstrom, assuming Ken Appleby isn't here, uh, because why would they sign Appleby if they got Soderstrom, right? Like Soderstrom would be the guy flipping between the AHL and the ECHL kind of thing to get him reps. But it's clear that it wasn't working out here between him and the New York Islanders. Um, so going forward with Linus Soderstrom, the rumor is that he's maybe going to sign with Jew Gardens again. Like things aren't going well with Assad, but Jew Gardens is looking for a goalie. Could be that he returns to his former team. Um, we'll see about that. But again, the ultimate question here, did the Islanders miss out by not qualifying Linus Soderstrom, and I'm going to say no. Again, it's not that Linus Soderstrom is a bad goalie. It's just clear that his caliber isn't NHL caliber. And that's perfectly fine. He can still make a really decent living playing hockey in Finland or Sweden, right? There's nothing wrong with that. All of us would love to be professional hockey players anywhere. Sure, NHL would be great. AHL would be fine. But playing overseas, playing they are paid well overseas to play professional hockey. I would sign up for that in a second if I had the skill. Of course, I don't, so I make videos about it. But thank you for watching. Thank you for following. I hope to do more of these as we go forward. If you have not subscribed yet, hit the button. And if you have, thank you, thank you, thank you.